Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So we are back on the grind with surviving Pertam, the wastelands. And I do mean that literally. Alright, so when I say back to the grind, literally, we do need to find a way to grind down everything here. Maybe save some of the storage so we can get prepping for the mobile base build. So the idea here is to potentially bring back the old crane or create a grinding pit but either way i feel like if we do a grinding pit we got to find a way to grind piece of this and move it along into the pit so that probably probably won't be feasible so i'm gonna find a way and project the old crane system hopefully it projects everything which i believe we have so many subgrid pieces to it so i may or may not do it not too sure but we're gonna find out today but before we begin we did finish our rover um not the best looking rover in the world but it had it looks decent it's not too bad so just taking a look outside this is the front here with two spotlights we have a turret system here hooked up to a small cargo container and some programming blocks on the side here so you can see it from inside when you're in the cockpit so unfortunately I put this too quickly together and didn't really design it very very well. So the back end doesn't look that great. I mean it could have probably left some things exposed to make it look better but I decided to close it all up with the heavy armor blocks and put on the ore detector and an antenna on the very top. So it really doesn't look that great but it works out pretty well. So when we're inside the cockpit as you see here we we're able to see the different programming blocks here if we needed to program it and also show any information on it it's available but mainly the programming block is to control the guy in front which is the turret system so this turret system is controlled by the very popular script in the series and that of course is the cockpit piston rotor and hinge controller so basically, going into the script itself, I've only used the Y and X axes for the mouse to go left and right with the rotor and the hinge to go up and down. So that gives me the ability to maneuver this turret this way. And of course, we added a camera in front so we can see exactly where we're targeting. So that kind of worked out in some ways, but of course, if we get attacked, then it's the first thing gets shot down, it's pretty much gone. <laughs> but the rest of it is built out of heavy armor, so it potentially can withstand a good number of things. Except for if we're getting shot at the cockpit um, first. So if we go in and a turret hits us on the cockpit and destroys it, the vehicle becomes useless in some ways. So that kind of sucks unless I put some kind of wall barrier in the front. Um, but we'll see how that kind of works out. And it looks like we missed a piece here in terms of the design. So we're just going to add that really quickly on here. All right, so this rover design, not the best in the world, but it's a functional rover. As you see here, we have um, front wheel drive in terms of steering. All wheels are working, so it's not a uh, four wheel drive. It's a um, eight wheel drive in that sense. But in terms of speed that we can get out of it, it's not too bad. Um, stopping is not is fine, turning is fine, everything works out pretty well on this guy and I can easily control the turret in front to move um, up and down and oh look it's the old crane system that we have here uh, that's useful for parts I guess but anyways everything's working and functional in terms of this rover again not the best looking thing in the world it's nice and long wheelbase makes it pretty controllable and hopefully we won't be able to flip this thing anytime soon. Um, if we did flip it, there is a gyroscope so we can always override and turn it back around. So what else is in here? Um, if you've seen in the previous episode, we added an O2 H2 generator, which Common said pretty much why I even added that. I could have just added a vent uh, with depressurized or made it, maybe an air tank or something like that in, in that in place of that because ice is extremely hard to get in this environment which i believe holds true because we have to find like those oasis in order to get ice 
Um, I still have this problem in this series that it leans right. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Um, from what I'm hearing, it's more of a glitch issue. So that may be the case. Um, but other than that, this thing drives pretty well. So I'm just crossing the bridge because I saw a whole bunch of trees here. So I just want to make sure to see if maybe this would be a potential area for ice. Um, usually I think the grass needs to be on the greener side um, for it to be ice. So I just want to come by and just double check. I think I found ice once before, um, but it's been a while, so I'm not too sure exactly where that is. But it looks like, yeah, that's definitely not ice. <laughs> so we're going to head back. So today's mission or goal is to maybe create a projector system for the large grid crane system the original one that we have in this series because that one worked like a dream until i clanged it up by putting a modular system to it the wrong way <laughs> so it flipped over from pretty much where the turbines are right there on the top right and it flew all the way to the pit that we just saw before so that was quite a distance that it flew uh, so we're going to have to find a way to project it and I hope it project, projects pretty well. This one here was a clang magnet so depending how it was kind of maneuvered in terms of the crane system part of it or the crane part of it, it was going to kind of just blow up on its own anyway. So it was just a poorly made crane system just like all the other rovers and systems I've created in this series. They all, you know, they work decently, unfortunately just not the best looking or the best operating ones for whatever reasons but of course that's probably because of time constraint not really spending a whole bunch of hours to really put them all together i mean we still put a couple hours into it it's just not as long as it probably can be especially um building it from scratch and also without a real good idea of how it's going to turn out all right so let's see how we're going to do this so if we want to do a projector system we could put, and it's going to be a large grid. So I remember it's such a big system. So we're going to have to kind of push it out and outside of everything. Um, and have enough room to project it. We could probably project it from down up in some ways. Yeah, I think that might be it. Because we're not going to be able to project it from like top. Then we could do probably top down. But I think bottom up sounds like a better idea so we potentially can just do it here actually using this house that we're going to get rid of so we can just put a projector system let's just say up to here maybe potentially i don't know that might be okay right so we can project it and then connect it to the bottom of the crane system which i believe shouldn't be really touching the floor Based on where the wheels are. So let's just extend this part a little bit more. So we can build it better. Alright. So I think that's going to be long enough. And we can just put on a projector. And we got to put up the right way around. So let's just grab a large. Uh, materials for the large projector. Or large grid projector. Alright. So if I remember correctly. These two strips here tells me that's the front and when it's vertical like this, I believe that's going to be up and down and the fourth strip here is usually the bottom or the top, I believe. And that's just kind of going by previous memory and trial and error. So let's just plop this guy on, weld it up together and I think we just need to put a control panel here. So we can easily put this one here. Which we don't have the parts. Alright, so we're going to get the parts really quick. Alright, we just put our control panel here. Weld it together. And get without projection. Going to a projector for the blue for the blueprint. I do kind of have a fairly decent idea that it might not get the subgrid pieces. And see how that kind of works out. Okay, so. That's the projection. It looks like it's upside down. So maybe that four strips is actually the top. So we probably just got to kind of flip that around. No big deal. 
Um, so we just gotta, I think it was row, I would say, to flip it over. Row, there we go. We rolled it. But of course, our forward and back is correct. Our vertical up and down seems to be correct. And our horizontal seems to be correct. So for the most part, it looks good. Um, so yeah, it may be that bottom piece that I have here is actually the top. Um, who knows, but this one at least works a little bit better than having everything reversed and um, having to kind of really, really figure them out. So, okay. So what we want to do here is let's just set this up correctly so that it can be projected right towards the middle. And I think that's going to kind of do it and we'll just drop it later and hopefully and hope for the best that it won't break. But as I mentioned before, I had Hank an idea that it might not take the subgrid and I'm pretty much correct here. So it is able to do everything else but the subgrid. So yeah, so that didn't go as planned. So we're going to figure something else out. Um, I mean, I, this whole home thing was a good idea in, in, in initially uh, just to get a nice little kitchen, TV, and a little bit of a fireplace. But all this has become useless because we barely use it to, is one thing. I mean, we only come in here to use the med bay. So we should definitely we we'll probably have to do this maybe by hand or maybe if i use the small grid version of my croc or the rover so we can use that to grind down uh, like a big portion of the home which might not be a horrible idea for the most part except that the fact i gotta kind of rebuild that and fix it up but it's not gonna carry too too much weight so that means it's going to grind it down and then eventually um, got to, you know, fill up on a connector point and I keep doing that, rinse and repeat. So that might be the best idea because doing this by hand, all of that, probably not a good one. Good way to spend the time to do that. I'm going to scratch the projector idea unless maybe I make something a little bit more simple. In terms of the crane piece to it so maybe just add a rotor some pistons and a hinge or so so it's easily controlled and we can just do it that way mm. that way i could build a larger container on top so we can carry more and then dump it into this connector there you know what let's just do that let's just let's just put this all together let's put the large grid crane system let's project it um, weld up the projection and then we'll tack on like a, a more simplified um crane system well not welder but a grinder system on top and i think that should kind of do it i would hope so at least so let's just put this together well we do have to do this kind of by hand right now because we don't have um, a welding system per se so let's just try to do this as quickly as possible and move forward from there. All right, so it looks like we've gone and did it and created a new crane system. All right, just for viewing purposes, I'm going to go to a spectator mode to show you guys the updated crane system here. All right, so this thing is kind of looking more like a tank in a way, where this can be pretty much a launcher and, you know, everything. So it's a little bit on the top heavy side um, because of this large cargo container. I could have put it a little bit lower potentially but we're just gonna leave it as that for now 
hopefully nothing happens if it does pose an issue we're just gonna have to lengthen the back side of it which i believe i did in the previous rover hmm anyways it seems to be okay for the most part so this again the base is what we projected which is a six wheeled drive system and we have all the the one battery i think we should probably add more <laughs> we have the one battery a programming block rotor two connectors one on the bottom to collect and dispense one on top to lock onto the top crane part that pivots left and right so this time we added a large cargo container and then we also add a small cargo container for no reason whatsoever and connect it to the cockpit the industrial cockpit and then from there we added some connectors to the large cargo container which I should probably secure it a little bit better by adding more blocks to the side or on top probably in the side more than anything so it has three hinge systems here um, just to control with weight if necessary so we can easily go up and down without any issues one might be able to handle all this but maybe not who knows but just to be on the secure side we put three and that's connected by the corner tubes with the conveyor junction right in the middle so all this is connected which it doesn't necessarily need to be connected only one of them really has to the rest is just used to carry more weight so and one of the biggest tips i could say to in to attach these hinge systems here like this basically build your hinges all three first remove the hinge part on two of them build your piece on the one that has the hinge part and build around the other two and then put the hinge part on those blocks i put it i started with this one that's why this one's still colored on a grayish color and then put the conveyor tube here and then a conveyor junction and another tube here then i put a hinge part on this conveyor directly and a hinge part on this tube directly and then went into the system and con attached not just connect but attach the whole entire hinge system here so that way they're all connected you can still do it with a merge block but that's more simple way of doing it from what i've learned in the past so from there we added two pistons just to go forward and then coming back to a similar system back there so that we can carry more weight and that is the grinder system that don't necessarily need these conveyors here but did it anyways to just get the extra length of it and connection of all three and put a little bit of a camera here just so we can see what we're grinding somewhat not the best thing in the world but for the most part once we get into here everything has been programmed it's kind of been pre-programmed because of you know the projection which was good uh, to have but we did have to edit something so like some some of the speed and of course the names i renamed some of these things um and then most importantly of course the controller name which is the industrial cockpit in this case so left right not too bad it is spinning out a little bit crazy not too bad up and down controlled on the grinder side you see there um, forward and backwards w and s brings the up and down closer to the cargo piece and then of course c and space brings out the pistons forward so i actually haven't tested out but bring the pistons all the way forward it's a bit much of an extension i think we could have gotten away with just one but it looks like we are okay for the most part yeah so it's tipping a little bit so we may need to extend the wheels a bit or or maybe not extend it this far out so maybe like something like that might do so it doesn't freak out too much eh, it's about the same thing but it's okay we definitely don't need it that long but we did it for for that purpose for whatever reasons <laughs> it's perfectly fine so we can easily now grind these pieces up so like for example we want to get rid of this platform we can easily do that as you see and we can always pivot and and pitch it up a bit and if we can't reach it we'll just extend the pistons this way so we have a functional crane system Oop, once again and i think i broke something probably a steel the steel block um, we should probably use the camera as you see here and we can go forward with space for the pistons 
can just grab these parts. So it's going to be a little bit faster than our traditional way of doing it. And that was going to be by hand. The only problem I would see and foresee um, is just <laughs> these scaffoldings would be easier to do by hand, to be honest. But um, the biggest piece, of course, will be the home itself that we need to kind of take apart. And I think the worst part of it, as well as it was in the first system, was that uh, we do need to get out of the cockpit up here to start moving it on from the bottom. So with that extension, I'm a little worried, so I should probably put more wheels in the front. But I think we should be okay for the most part now. Um... But yeah, I think I need to change something really quickly in these settings because I believe one of these should be on the negative side. So actually, it's the non-negative side. The WS for moving the hinge closest to cargo was opposite. So up W is up, S is down, which is perfectly what I needed. And from here, we can easily do this now and get all our parts back from the home and also from other pieces such as those broken rovers that you see on the outside or outskirts of the system here and of course we can get rid of those small rovers that we don't need anymore um maybe keep the batteries eh, they're not significant anymore in terms of um materials we can always get more materials but i think this was a bit more of a simplified system Trying to keep it as simple as possible. Instead of having that that tilt with the hinge and everything like that. This one works a little bit probably safer in that sense. Um, since it extends too far out. I think I need more wheels in the front. And maybe one more in the back. But that can be for another day. But at least we now have a good plan. A good system. Where we can grind down everything we can. Um from this base store it and then start working on our mobile base so this thing drives pretty well luckily everything's kind of still set from the previous system so just just to grind more things down and i think what i'm going to do is uh, since this episode is going to be a little long in some ways we're gonna just time lapse the big grinding down of the other system or the home the home I should say. But for now, we can just grind down some of these pieces that we don't need anymore, which is, of course, this whole, I guess, Mark II crane, which wasn't the best thing in the world and <laughs> clanged out. But we can always pick these guys up and um, move forward from there. So this here saves us a lot of materials by grinding all this down. The I think, for the most part, using camera will be a little helpful, but... For the most part, we should be able to carry a lot of weight and a lot of materials with the large cargo container, which is a good thing. Um, in previous times, it was a different story. Um, for It was too top heavy and previously we only used small cargo containers because this was going to be too top heavy, which it still kind of is to be honest. But I should really test it on that ramp here to connect to the connector, but I haven't done that yet. so. We will have to do that eventually to make sure we're going to be okay and not fall down and backwards. So I am a little worried about giving that a shot, but we're going to have to do that eventually. And if we do it with a full cargo, that might be even worse than <laughs> a worse idea than we think, to be honest. So let me just grab a little bit more of these just to make sure we're going to be okay. Yeah. Looks like we're good. So this system works out not too bad. It swings pretty good. I can speed up the hinge um, kind of motion a little bit if I wanted to. So we can start grinding down more things a lot quicker. And I think I am pretty satisfied with this build. So much, much less complicated than previous builds, of course. And it works out pretty okay, which is... A good thing um, but of course the only big problem still is that I do need to control the 
bottom piece in order to move the whole system which is not the end of the world but it's also not the best thing in the world so I may need to do maybe an, a remote control that wheel is going to roll off roll off to the sunset I guess but what we may need to do is put a remote control and antenna uh, maybe not even antenna because we're going to be fairly close to the system I think we don't need it maybe, maybe I could be wrong or maybe I could use a beacon in, in some ways um, so we can control it so that uh, we can just be on the uh, top part just remote in instead of getting in and out to um, control the bottom piece I think that should work not too sure I mean why not give it a try now I guess right so let's just get some pieces and parts pieces and parts let's get some parts and plug in a remote control we could probably put it right here in the back so let's just go ahead and, and actually take care of that All right so if you don't know here's a quick tip with the remote control um, this positioning as I have it currently where it's sloped on the top this is facing forward so looking at it right now that is the front of it so we want to place it for us we want to place it like this so that it goes forward so the back piece here is the flat end that's the back and of course the bottom here is bottom which looks the same but the best way to tell from the direction is actually looking at it directly like this where the light is right in the middle ish area and the two strips light strip of light is on the top so we just want to place it down like this it looks like i need to get some parts so i'll be right back all right so that's all set so that again that's the way it's going to be in terms of forward as you see the two strips of light up there um, another quick way of seeing that is basically on the right hand side the remote control you'll see that it's the way it's looking and you're facing it that's pretty much the forward piece of it just minor quick tips so let's see if this works so if i go in here Am I too far to remote into this system? Um, I believe so. But I can't take control of the system because... Well, no. Hold on. Let's turn on my Wi-Fi signal. <laughs> and see if that works. There we go. So there's two control systems. So one of them is pretty far away. I'm not sure which is which. Actually, what is what? Okay, I don't know what I'm controlling, to be honest. Um, but we can see what this is. This is a battery with a projector. And that is, that might be the bridge, <laughs> if I remember correctly. So what is this? This is, okay, so that is that guy over there in the back. So you technically, it looks like you need an antenna for this system um, with the when you have the remote control. But that's going to pose a bit of an issue because we don't have a lot of space for an antenna unless we put in a very back here because these things are fairly big but let's try a beacon really quick to see if that works let's try a beacon really quick to see if that works all right here's a beacon in the back we can do shift control no, it, that doesn't work with the remote control, so that's not good. So it looks like we do need to put antenna. So I'm going to have to scrap this guy and put on the antenna, basically. Alright, so here's a bit of an antenna in the back. Not the best placement, because once it falls backwards, it can just break. But just for the sake of it, we we'll probably have to find a way to move it later on. Let's just see, shift control. Alright, so we can finally control it. So we do need an antenna to control it this way. Um... That placement of the antenna might not be the best in the world. Too bad the antennas are quite large in size, especially the dish. Otherwise, I would have just used that. So if we went in here, right, and unparked it, go to our remote control, we can control it here. And, well, I parked it. Unparked it now. So yeah, so I can control it with a remote control system, but I do need an antenna. So the curious question is, do I can I put the antenna elsewhere on the subgrid instead of the main part of it? Because that piece is quite long and not an ideal position of where it is currently. So, um, but at least it works that we know. But it also acts kind of like a tipping point or a tail. So when it is going to fall backwards, at least it's going to fall on that and hope for the best. 
and so that it won't just break. Um, but maybe it will help us from flipping over as well. So it's going to be kind of a good thing. Alright, so we are being able to connect. Problem here is I have so much connectors and... Oh, they're actually named. So here's the one that connects to the bottom. Luckily, these were projected versions so I can easily find them. So we can easily do ready and we're locked in, can charge up and also move some inventory. All right, so in order to move inventory, I got to make sure the one right in front of us here by the antenna is connected to large cargo connectors, um, large cargo containers connector that's facing down. So then I can easily move everything. All right, so looking at here, this is all we collected so far from our grinding journey. Um, not sure where this came from. I think it came from the old crane system that flipped over in the connector. It's kind of odd that I had some over there. But anyways, this system is working pretty nicely. And maybe that bad design the antenna was going to save us if it's going to fall backwards. Actually, you know what? Let's, we got to test that. Um, again, we can easily remote in because we created a system here to do that. Uh, okay, for some reason I can't remote in. What is going on? Uh, maybe because it's connected to base. I would think so. Let's see, we unlinked it. Get off of there. I'm in here. Now we can remote in. Uh, okay, so what I did was basically the remote control has the two bar. I'm on the two bar of the remote control. So when I connect it to the connector, it kind of caused an issue there. So that's kind of interesting. So I would have to, let's just say, I locked in I would have to go to the terminal here looks like I can't even do the terminal that's interesting well maybe just controls and turn off the bottom connector which is kind of weird in a sense but I guess that's the way it's gotta go I guess uh, where is this piece this one here so we gotta switch lock it or unlock it this way and then we can control it. Yeah, so that's that's a bit of an issue, but not a significant issue. Um, should be okay for the most part. But yeah, we emptied it out. We can back it up. And let's just hope for the best that it's not going to destroy the antenna. Okay, we're looking good. That is not bad at all. Um, I think last time we had a system with the large car containers, I did try it. And it almost flipped over coming off that ramp. That ramp is not very steep. But for some reason, it was able to almost flip the whole entire thing. Alright, so the crane system is all set. Looks good. Next up, it's pretty much grinding everything down and storing it. Probably have to create a little more storage containers, cargo containers in that front. So, first things first, we got to grab that guy over there. Um, bring it here so we can probably maybe just throw it in this pit that this has created. Actually, this is not even a pit. There's a pit further down. We could probably throw it in there if we wanted to and grind it down from there with using that new crane system. Or oh, that's floating. <laughs> or um, we just grind it down standing up. Either one should be fine for the most part. We do need to get rid of this one here. Do we want to save the batteries? Uh, probably not. It should be okay. We actually will be losing about 60 power cells not very significant since we can we have enough more than enough parts and more than enough mats from the drilling system uh, this outrider truck will no longer be functional so we're gonna get rid of this uh, soon and it's just mostly metal grids looks like not metal grids steel plates for the most part and at least we have a decent looking well a functional <laughs> rover that we can use as part of our journey uh, with the moving mobile base um, eventually maybe probably clean this up to make it look a little bit better but for now it is what it is and um, at least if it's functional as a as a turret system we just gotta add some ammo which we don't have whatsoever so we're gonna have to do that eventually all right, so as always, if you made it this far into the video, please hit that thumbs up, like the video. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that notification bell to be alerted of upcoming videos. Always feel free to drop a comment down below. 
Uh, it's much appreciated and it helps with the analytics. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.